and start the broadcast. Okay, people are joining. Good afternoon, everybody. We're just um, waiting to let uh, a few more people get in. Um, I hope this finds you well and not too uh, restricted by what's going on, that you're able to, in the freedom of your homes, um, still be able to socialize. Uh, I know I've been starving a little bit with that. We'll just um, wait a minute or two um, and then we'll get stuck in because um, obviously you're not here to listen to me. We're here to listen to the amazing evil vice. <laughs> All right. We're still, I see the attendees still going up. It's mm -hmm. actually quite fun. It's like watching a counter. Ding, 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 yeah, ding, yeah. Ding. <laughs> it was really. <laughs> okay. All right. I think uh, let's, let's make a start. Okay. So I, uh, I, I'm going to just quickly uh, do some intros and then as soon as possible, I'm going to hand over to Edelweiss. Um, so uh, I'm Roger Cressy. I'm from, uh, I'm a group director and owner at Cubix. Um, we're in five different geographies around the world um, and we implement and develop ERP, EPM and VI solutions alongside our customers. Um, but pertinent to today, um, I, I've been volunteering alongside a number of amazing people, in fact, including our presenter today, uh, in various capacities within the Analytics and Data Summit, um, uh, uh, Analytics and Data Oracle User Community. There we are. I finally got the full name. I've been volunteering alongside a number of those people, um, and um, it's an honor to be able to host this with Eagle Vice today. So um, just some housekeeping briefly. Um, Edelweiss is going to be talking to us about um, autonomous, autonomous data warehouse cloud for developers and data scientists. But just the, the housekeeping before I introduce her properly, um, I'd like to just talk to you about future and part, past uh, tech casts. Um, our next tech, tech cast is um, being done by Wayne Van Sluis. And uh, in fact, I not sure what the title of it is, but I can tell you from now that he'll wow us with some sort of uh, um, analytics and uh, BI or machine learning or AI. Um, we'll, uh, we'll certainly get uh, something interesting from Wayne. Um, April 16th, um, uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. An old friend of mine, Deborah Lilly, will be pre presenting on Women in Oracle Technologies. Um, and then just go, go, go and have a look at the website uh, and you'll see some past ones. You'll see um, first steps with o o Oracle Autonomous from March um, the 12th from Rita Nunez. February the 20th, we had Graph Database and Analytics from Melial Anamalai. And uh, February the 6th, I'm really impressed with my own presentation there, uh, my pronunciation. And then... Um, February the 6th was a preview of A&D sessions on OAC presented by Philippe Leon. If you ever listen to Philippe, he's fantastic to listen to. So uh, the um, Edelweiss's information will be included in the um, posted um, view version of the uh, presentation today. There will also be, the, this is being recorded and that will also be made available on the website. So um, uh, there will also be a helpful link slide that'll be presented with this when it's uploaded as well. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce Edelweiss. Um, she is an Oracle ACE director um, and uh, analytics and data integration specialist with over 20 years of consulting and project management experience. Uh, you'd never think that to look at her. You wouldn't think she's old enough. Um, and I'm going to summarize her intro, um, otherwise you'd end up listening to me for the whole half hour instead of her. Um, she's worked with both private and public organizations, um, which has spanned much of South America and World, Project Banks, uh, World Bank projects. Um, she's an Oracle University instructor and has been teaching on anything Oracle BI and of course now Oracle Analytics Cloud. 
She's a frequent speaker at many events across Latin America and North America. Um, and we had the pleasure of her presenting to us at the AND Summit this year. Um, and it, yeah, you can take your, pick your flavor of listening to her. She'll present to you in Spanish, Portuguese, or English. Um, she's an active member of the Oracle community and um, we love having her work with us at the AND uh, organization as well. So um, one last bit of housekeeping. Um, if you do have questions and answers, please put them into the Q&A window. Do not put them into the chat because they won't be picked up. Also the Q&A window is provided, um, you know, depending on how we go for timing, we may be able to answer some in the session. However, we'll focus on the presentation and we may have to come back to you after with Q&A. So without further ado, Edelweiss, would you take it away, ma'am? Perfect, thank you so much, Russia. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, really. Okay, so, uh, Welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud for developers and data scientists. So let's start it. Okay, so right now I'm the BA manager of a company that is called IT Conversions. It's a global company that has uh, plus uh, 600 employees. We usually work remote. Um, but we have offices in US, obviously, and uh, Latin America and India. So I'm from Uruguay, so if you don't know what it is, here you have. It's between Argentina and Brazil, a small country, but uh, we have a very nice, very nice weather, usually the four seasons well differentiated. This is Montevideo, the capital, and this thing like, looks like a, a mothership is our airport. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you have heard about the Oracle Ace program, but, but it's a, a program that runs, it's run by, by Oracle that has, uh, that recognizes the people that contribute with their knowledge and their time uh, to the community. So if you're interested in, here is a slide, you can, you can go through it, you can find some nice directors, you can start uh, going through this path uh, starting a blog post, sharing your uh, knowledge in the forums, answering questions, uh, presenting in conference, be part of the Oracle user groups. So there's a lot of way to contribute to this community and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very important thing to do. Okay, here's the agenda for today. The first thing that we're going to discuss, uh, let me see if I can move this. It's about what is Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. Maybe you are very familiar with it, maybe you're not. So basically, uh, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud is a cloud service which is especially designed for data warehouse. Okay, so in Oracle, you have two autonomous uh, database cloud services. One is Autonomous Transaction Processing, which is for uh, transactional database. Uh, which the operations, obviously, that it's uh, optimized for is insert, delete, you know, update. But for data workers, the idea is that you have to uh, collect information with, with queries very, very fast. So this is a columnar database based on Oracle database 18C or 19C. This is the two options that you can select when you create it and are based on, uh, and it's based on exadata. Okay. So it's on OCI. It doesn't require administration tasks or tuning. In fact, you don't have access to the sys or system user. You have access to uh, one administrator user that is called admin. And the data that you put into this Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud is encrypted. It's safe and encrypted. The security is very high. Um, we are going to see that we have some machine learning features that are very, very interesting for data scientists. And that we also can uh, set the online scaling for CPU and storage. That means that uh, if you put it, you have two options. You can auto scaling, which allows uh, the data warehouse cloud to decide when it has to increase or decrease um, the resources, not CPU and storage. You can do it like that, setting up uh, the auto scaling, or you can do it manually. So you can you know, have more control about when you're going to have more CPU and more storage. With this uh, cloud service, also uh, you have the license, like 50 license for CPU of data visualization desktop, which is included. Okay. 
So the first thing that you have to do to work with uh, Oracle Cloud is to log in. Okay, so we are going to see this more with the tool. So let me move this. Okay, there we go. There we are. Okay, I imagine that everybody can see my screen, Ryan. Yes, sure. can strange. you see the Oracle Cloud? Perfect. Okay, this is the uh, Oracle Cloud. We can see all here all the services that we have access, uh, the autonomous data warehouse, autonomous transaction processing, and for platform service, we have analytics, analytics classic, and something else. So we are going to start, for example, how we can create an autonomous data warehouse cloud, okay? The first thing that you have to do is select the compartment. The compartment is a logical division. It's not a, a, a physical division. It's a logical division, like a folder, like you have in your operative system, uh, in order to organize uh, your cloud services. One thing that you can do is you can create a, um, a compartment and then you create the cloud services. But if you, for example, want to move this cloud service to another compartment, you can do it too, okay? So you can, uh, you are going to select the name of the database, the display name and the name of the database that you want. We already enter into the data warehouse console. So this is the type of autonomous uh, data warehouse that is selected. You can choose a deployment type if it's a shared infrastructure or dedicate exadata infrastructure. And here you have the type of database version that you can uh, have. For now it's 18C and 19C, soon will be uh, 20C, okay? And here you have the amount of CPUs and the amount of storage that you want. Obviously, if you set auto scaling, this is something that you can uh, set in here or you can set it later. If you are not setting this, you will have to, and you need more CPU or more storage, you need to do it manually, okay? This is the admin user. You have to select a password and confirm password. This is for, uh, we need a, a password of 12 characters at least with uh, an uppercase, lowercase and a special character. And if you see, you cannot modify the name of the administrator user. So it's not sys, it's not system, it's admin, okay? You can create, use a virtual cloud network and you have two options, bring your license and license included. We are going to see also that uh, we have a free, um, a free uh, access to the autonomous data warehouse. You can have the, the always free uh, autonomous data warehouse. We are going to see how to, uh, it's, it's the same process, but you are not going to pay for anything. So we're going to see the, the link after we end with this. So this is how you create it. Let's come back to the one that I already have. Okay. Okay, so this is one that I already created before. Uh, if you want to start, stop, this is how you do it. When it's, when it's up, you have the, version, the option to stop it. When, you, uh, when it's stopped, you have the option to start. And this is, is the service console. One important thing here is how you connect with the autonomous data warehouse. With the autonomous data warehouse, you have to connect using a wallet, okay? And you download the wallet from here. From the console administration, you download the wallet. So let's come back to the slides in order not to lose. You have everything here, but I, I thought it was, you know, more interesting for you to see it, you know, with the tool uh, in, in a live demo, okay? So in order to connect, as I told you, with Autonomous Data Warehouse, you have to use a wallet, okay? A wallet is a single sonon file. Uh, and one thing that is important is sometimes people get the perception that you can use Autonomous Data Warehouse only with Oracle products, which is not true. In fact, if you go through to this link, you will see that you have many, many, many certified 
third, uh, third type products, like for example, uh, Culic View, uh, Looker, uh, Tableau, Power BI, that you can access. Okay, so let me. Okay, this is, this is taking a while. I will continue with the with the slides. But well, after after that, you will you will you will check the the links and you will see the the um, the certification matrix for all the tools. Okay. When you download uh, the wallet, you will have a zip file. This zip file, this is the content of the zip of this zip file, which is uh, the wallet that you have for connecting to Autonomous Data Warehouse. There are two ways to connect depending on the tool. In some tools, like for example, SQL Developer, you use the zip file. But in some other tools, you use the single sign-on file that you have here. Okay, so you have to uh, download the zip file, unzip it, but keep both. Okay. And if you see, you will see also the GNS names, GNS names. And if you open it, you will see three types of connection, three entries, which it maybe you know make you what makes you wonder you know, why I have three type of different entries to connect to autonomous. And the idea is is at three different levels depending on the performance and concurrency that you want. So the high uh, entry is for the maximum uh, performance and with a small number of concurrency. So you can have three concurrent queries at the same time with all the uh, power that Autonomous Data Warehouse has. And in this value doesn't depend, does not depend on the number of CPUs. So it will be three concurrent queries no matter how many CPUs do you have. The medium entry is for a, pre, uh, a small lower, uh, little lower uh, performance level, but you have much more number of concurrent queries. And the lowest for the lowest value for performance, but the highest value of concurrency. I have to uh, highlight the lowest value of performance is a huge, you know, it's a very, very good performance because remember that we're running this on Exadata uh, and it's a, uh, a columnar database. So the low usually we can use it for, uh, for replication, you know, like on the gate or for an ETL a load, you know, a batch process or something like that. I have an example here. If you have, for example, autonomous data warehouse cloud with 16 CPUs, the high always, the, it doesn't depend on the number of CPUs that you have, will be three concurrent queries. Median it will be 1.25 uh, plus the OCPUs that you have, so it's like 20. And the low it will be up to 300 times the number of CPUs that you have, the OCPUs. Okay? Just for you to have an idea. But well, let's start working with what Autonomous Data Warehouse uh, has for developers. So I have a lot of information in the slides. We have a you know, restricted amount of time. So I'm going to focus on Apex and SQL Developer Web. But you have all the information in the slides. So you will, you, the slides are, are going to be shared and you can you know, check it uh, all the time, okay? Let's start with Apex. Okay, so for Apex, let me go, let me come back to the, to the tool. Okay, so I'm still in the console, remember, and instead of going to the administration, I'm going to development. In development, I press the Oracle Apex. This. Okay. So the first time, this is not the uh, screen that will appear. The first time that you connect with the Oracle Apex, this is the uh, page that is going to appear, the administration service. Why? Because in order to work with, an a with Apex, you need to create workspace. Okay? Workspace is the area that you create the content and you uh, create the forms or, or dashboards or whatever you want. Okay, or applications. So what you have to do here is to remember the password of admin. Remember admin is the administrator that we have. So 
we are going to sign in into the administration and this is the page okay here, here we are okay so the first thing that you have to do is to create a workspace for that you need to select a database user okay i already created one for this select the workspace name and that's it you create a workspace and then you have a workspace once you do that you need to log out from this page return to sign in page and here we are and we have and we can enter to the workspace that we just created okay so that looks password changes and there we are so what we have here is the possibility of doing a lot of stuff first this is the application builder okay i can create a new application from scratch if i want to create a new application from scratch i can create a new application okay i can use a file csv xml excel file or i can use a template of a productivity app so if i go here I can see there is a lot of applications that a lot of templates for applications instead of start creating one from scratch without you know having any idea of how to do it okay so this is this is quite good so in theory in, in general sorry for autonomous data warehouse cloud what, what we can have is to create charts or to create dashboards or to visualize the data that we have in autonomous data warehouse so i can Select sample chart, okay, and you press the install app, and that's it, and you start creating the, okay, the application, okay. So this is one thing that you can do. Application builder. Um, here is the gallery. If you want to check the gallery before creating a builder, okay. And you also can have the option to use RESTful services and to enable you know the schema for rds and uh, generate restful data services for for the table that you want okay this is for apex so if you're familiar with apex let's uh, you have the the possibility to work natively uh, in autonomous data warehouse cloud okay so let's come back to the session Here you have all the steps, okay? And the other thing that I want to work for developers is the SQL developer web, okay? So you can connect obviously uh, with SQL developer, which is more, a more powerful option on-prem than the one that you have in, in, in the web. But this is, is very practical and I want to show you. So come back to the application okay let's uh, move this so i can close okay here we are okay so perfect okay i'm still in development remember in the console and i'm going instead of going to oracle apex i'm going to sql developer web Okay, so I need to enter a username and password. I will use admin. Good. And for SQL developer, I, you, can, you can enter with any uh, user that you have created for, uh, for Autonomous Data Warehouse. You can create a, a user in the same way that you create any user in Oracle database, same thing. And here we are. So we have uh, in the worksheet, the possibility of seeing all the schemas that I have access to. So for example, let's go to movie demo. Okay. And these are all the objects that I can see. So right now I just want to see the tables, but if I want to see other objects, I can do it from here. Okay. Um, I can just, you know, create a query, select master from 
movidemos. Customer, and just run it as we usually do. I put it wrong, sorry. Just an extra O in the movie. Yeah. Demo. <laughs> sorry, I was on mute, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no problem. And here you have the results pretty fast. So you can create, uh, you can select all, do the, all the, all the, all the SQL sentences that you need here. You can, you know, run scripts too in the same way that you can uh, do it in SQL Developer. You can see the explain plan. Okay, and if you want, you can save this worksheet. Okay, so let's put it. For example, okay, and then save, okay. And I can just, if I don't want this and I want, for example, one that I use in the Oracle Open World, I can just select that and see what is the content. Okay, so if I go here to the worksheets. Just to give you a very quick four minute warning. Sorry, Idleness, just to. Sorry? Just, it, just a four minute warning until half past, I'm sure that uh, those who will uh, be around will stick on afterwards, but just so you know, you've got Okay, four, okay, so I four have four minutes. minutes. Okay, yes. perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, so let's move to machine learning part. The only, only one thing that I just want to show you that I think is pretty nice. You have also data modeler here. So if you drag some tables, you will see um, the relationship between the tables. Okay, pretty fast, pretty neat. Okay, it's just that. Let's move on to machine learning part. Okay, so service console. The first thing that you have to do for machine learning is to manage Oracle machine learning users. You need to create a machine learning user. Just create one, username, first name, last name, create, and that's it. And then you come back, so you did that in the administration, in the console, then you go to development and go to Oracle Machine Learning Notebooks. I already have my user loaded. And here we are. So Machine Learning Notebooks is, uh, I don't know if someone are familiar with uh, Machine Learning Notebooks, but this is based on Apache Zeppelin. And the benefits of having notebooks is you have uh, the possibility to document everything that you do. And you also have the possibility to use machine learning features from the database. So you have to, you, you will use the DB, DBMS data mining package. So we call it before Oracle uh, Advanced Analytics option in the database. Right now it's Oracle Machine Learning. And you have the option to uh, create different paragraphs uh, and you use an interpreter for each paragraph. Just put um, percentage SQL or percentage script and you create SQL or PL SQL. So it's a way to say, you know what, what is, what is, uh, is written below is an SQL sentence. If you put um, percentage script, the thing that you write below that is a PL SQL. So this is a SQL uh, notebook basically. Okay, so you will have some examples. I, I, it's a pity that I won't have enough time to show some examples, but, but you have pretty examples in uh, Oracle uh, Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. So if you want to see an example, you just, okay, choose one. I know that's just one minute. Don't worry, um, Edelweiss, can I just interrupt you once again? What yeah. we'll do, is we, we'll carry on, but just so everybody knows, um, just so if people do have to go promptly at, at, uh, at the half hour, um, this will be um, put onto the website. There'll be a, a PDF of it uploaded as well, and we'll answer any questions and answers that you do post uh, after the session. But we're gonna let this run uh, probably for another 10 to 15 minutes, uh, assuming Edelweiss that you have the time, ma'am. Yes, yes, I, I can have, yeah. Okay, so with that, I'll stop interrupting you and you carry on. And if you need <laughs> to go through one of these, I'd love to, I'd love to see it. 
Thank you. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is in, in Oracle Machine Learning, you have a lot of examples that you can use. Uh, but these examples, you can only see it. Okay, I cannot run it. I just see it, you know, that say finish it. I can see what they have been created and the result. This is something very beneficial of a, a, a notebook, you know. You don't only see the, the code that you have, but you also see the result. And this result, you can see it in different types, in a table form, a pie chart, a line chart, you know, like you have it here, for example. Okay. So if you want to play with something that is an example in order not to start from, from scratch, one tip that I can give to you is to use this button. So you open an example, press the export button. So that button will be download to your machine and JSON file, okay? You can see it here, sorry. JSON file, okay? So this JSON file, you can go to the if I go to home, it's just for you to, to see. This is the examples. This is my notebooks. So I go again to my notebooks and press import. And I can import the example that I just downloaded. Okay. One notebook imported successfully is this one. And this notebook is mine. So I can break it, you know, I can, you know, play with it. And if you see, okay, you have the possibility to run each paragraph. Okay, you can also run everything. But the important thing is you can play with this. Okay, so you can play with that. Okay, you see the results now. You can create new paragraphs, okay? You can just if I put it right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, I put it something wrong. Then. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter. But you can create new paragraphs. Paragraphs you can um, play with it. You can create obviously new uh, notebooks from scratch. But if you don't have, if you're not familiar with it, I will recommend to start with this, with playing with this, to check the machine learning examples uh, that we have here. You know, for regression, for uh, classification prediction, for clustering. So this is going to be helpful for you and there are some links that are in fact if you open any of the examples you will see that you have some links that are going to be very helpful for you okay for more information you can go to the documentation machine learning folder on github so if we can go there you will see um, I have to copy it better. But you will see all the other examples. In addition to this, you will have more examples in, in the GitHub folder to start playing. And it's a JSON file, so you can import it and start checking it. Okay. Um, developer web. So if you are uh, if you want to work with other uh, programming languages like PHP, Node, Perl, you have here the way to do it, the way to connect with autonomous. The same thing for uh, machine learning. So for machine learning, if you want to use R and Python, and one thing that is important is uh, we are going to have, so autonomous data workflow is going to have um, a native connectivity with R and Python sooner. Uh, I think for Python, it will be, you know, in the very near future, less than six months. So. Yeah, stay tuned because it's, it's going to have this connectivity uh, very native in, in the same way that, that we have playing with machine learning notebooks for SQL. So if you right now want to work with R and Python and use Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud, you can do it, you know, uh, following these this, um, indications for Python, obviously you use the same library that you use for on-prem Oracle database, CX Oracle. 
um, here I put all, it's all the steps that you have to follow. The same thing with the Scala. And these are helpful links that um, can help you in going more deeper because this is just 30 minutes. Uh, but you have here a lot of more information uh, that it will be useful for you to start doing tutorials. For example, tutorials are really good. Uh, there's also a YouTube channel uh, that show you the labs, how to do the labs. There's a lot of information and most important thing is the free crowd, free, new, always free services. So you can have the autonomous databases for free plus a three-day free trial for 300 credits. But autonomous, you know, you can do it for free and you can play and you can do all the labs and all the tutorials that I show here. So you can start playing with it and who knows, maybe you, you're going to be the, the next presenter, you know, soon in the analytics and data summit and data techcast. I don't know, Roger, what do you want to, how, how you want okay. to? Well, I tell you what, I, I, I'm, I, I had said an extra 10 minutes and we've got a few minutes left. Okay. Um, I, have two, I have two questions in the Q&A. Okay. Um, uh, one from Barry Starkey saying, what is Oracle Analytics Cloud and how is it different from Oracle Data Visualization Desktop? Um, okay. If you'd like to do that succinctly. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. Great. yeah. Okay, so Oracle Analytics Cloud, um, data, Oracle Analytics Cloud, you have um, different versions. You have the standard one, which is almost the same thing like data visualization desktop, but it's on the cloud, okay? Um, and then you have the Oracle Analytics Cloud Enterprise Edition, uh, which is, uh, it has data visualization plus what they call the BI Classic, which is Oracle BI, basically. Okay, so you have the repository, you have, uh, you know, the more, more powerful uh, BI tools with BI Publisher, Answers, um, Dashboards, and you have the data visualization. Uh, but uh, in order for play with it, you can uh, download data visualization desktop. You cannot use it for production, obviously. Uh, but in fact, if you have Oracle Analytics Cloud, you have license for desktop too, as well as you have Autonomous Data Warehouse, you have data visualization too. But if you have Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud, you don't have OIC license. You have data visualization desktop license. So. Uh, data visualization desktop is especially oriented for business users to play with the tool. The OEC with, uh, uh, with the enterprise edition is um, the data visualization plus Oracle BI, which is more oriented to IT to create, you know, more, more powerful, I think, uh, visualizations and pixel perfect reports that you cannot create with data visualization. And there is another thing in, which is really, was released a few months ago which is Oracle Analytics Server, which is the evolution of Oracle BI. So right now, for example, if you have Oracle BI and you have paid the Oracle support, you can, uh, instead of up upgrade Oracle BI to the last, to the, to the next version, you can upgrade it to uh, Oracle Analytics Server, which is almost the same thing like Oracle Analytics Cloud, but on-prem. And you don't have to pay extra for that, just for you to know. That's brilliant. Thanks, Eagle Vice. There's, there's another, the, uh, well, a, a few questions, just a series. Uh, Bupendra was interested in um, what is the interpreter for Python and R in Zeppelin Notebook? Now, I know you've just covered um, a, yeah. a, a way so to actually use Right now, the, 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 the machine learning notebook that we have in Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud is just an SQL notebook. What does it mean that uh, you don't have access to, to use an interpreter of, of R and Python? You can use uh, a machine learning, not, uh, an Oracle notebook uh, that use R and Python in big data cloud um, service, but not here, not here yet. You know, uh, the, it's going to be in the, in the near future, they're going to, um, you're going to play with R and Python from uh, machine learning, but not, not right now, not right now in Autonomous Data Warehouse. Uh, so it's, it's going to be there. But in Apache Zeppelin, if you go to the, to the page of Apache Zeppelin very, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, 
Apache Zeppelin. Okay. Apache Zeppelin here. Apache Zeppelin is, a, is, a, is an open source. This Oracle, uh, Oracle machine learning notebooks are based on Apache Zeppelin. And you have different types of Apache Zeppelin, SQL notebooks and Spark notebooks and Python notebooks. So uh, we have here a SQL notebook, not R and Python. That's great. Okay, and then one more, uh, for, one more for the road, let's say. Yeah. Um, Mark West is asking, does data visualization desktop work with a Mac? Yes, yes. In fact, I have a Mac and I have data visualization. The only thing is you don't have, uh, for example, in data visualization, you have like more than 50 different type of sources that you can connect. Um, and with the data visualization for Mac, you have less. It's the only difference. You have less data sources that you can connect. So it's not exactly, exactly the same thing. The, the same the same features but it's, it's only that it's, uh, you have more more data sets uh, more sorry more data types that you can connect in the windows version than in mac but if you have for example an excel file or an oracle database you can use it you can download the mac version and, and and work with it yes and it's one of the i think one of the few if not the only uh analytic tool that can work with a Mac, you know, because it, like, like every, every other other tool that's for analytic service and desktop is, is they, they force you to use Windows, which I don't like, personally. And with that, uh, that's fantastic. Edelweiss, thank you. I, I love that uh, so much of your presentation was real life as opposed to PowerPoint. Um, and so if I can just thank you one more time and then we'll close this off. Thank you so much for your, for your presentation. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you so much, Roger. And well, stay safe, guys, and hope to see you soon. Yeah, stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye.